Okay, we're turning to a few verses this morning, and we're starting off in Ephesians uh, chapter 3. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, then we're going over to Jude, and then we're turning into the book of Hebrews. Ephesians chapter 3, and just down to the last uh, few verses of that chapter, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, and verse 20. well-known verses we're after this morning. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Turn with me now over to Jude just before uh, the book of Revelation. You'll come to the little epistle of Jude. And to verse 24, just take your time, and Jude, and to verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now turn with me <clears throat> into uh, the red epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 2, you'll follow the theme of our message this morning, we're sure. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18, the last verse of that chapter. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able also to succor them that are tempted. Come with me now for a final reading to Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. And We'll just keep our Bibles open there, please. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest becometh us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, and we'll end the reading there this morning. Just bow with me for a wee moment of prayer, please, uh, before we go any further. Father, we just come again into thy presence in the place of prayer, and we just ask, Lord, in the moments that are remaining in this meeting this morning, Lord, for the conscious sense of thy presence to come among us. Father, you know every single person in this meeting this morning. You know everything about us, Lord. The Word of God reminds us that you know the very hairs that are upon our head. And Father, in the moments that we have, we cry that you'll come by the power of thy Spirit. And Father, speak into all of our hearts. We thank you for that lovely hymn that we're just after singing. And Lord, how it warms our heart that those of us this morning that are saved... We can stand on the authority of the Word of God and sing from the depths of our heart, Mine, 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 I know Thou art mine. Savior, dear Savior, I know Thou art mine. We pray for those in the meeting that don't know. We pray, Lord, that before they leave this meeting this morning that they will know, O oh God, the personal uh, relationship with Thee. And so, Father, I pray that You'll come now and fill me afresh with thy spirit. I have nothing to offer thee, Lord, this morning. I come before thee as an empty vessel. And I pray, Lord, that you'll fill me again with that sacred anointing oil, O oh God, from the crown of my head to the sole of my foot. And Father, that indeed this morning that your word will go forth with clarity and with power and with boldness. And Lord, that we'll have a word in season to all of our hearts. We pray that you'll take away every distraction. Pray, Lord, that you'll take away every thought of later on and tomorrow. And we come against every spirit and every demon that would seek to hinder in this meeting this morning. And we pray the protecting power of the blood of Christ upon us. And so we cry that the very atmosphere in this meeting will be charged with the presence of God. Make it a special meeting this morning. And Father, we cry that indeed that our hearts will be encouraged and touched as we gather around your word. We ask it in the lovely and precious and worthy name of thy Son. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you. I want to talk to you this morning about the Lord Jesus and some things that He can do that no one else can do. You know, uh, we measure men by their ability, don't we? You see a tradesman and you say, that's a good man because he can do a good job. Or you see a woman and she can do something well and you say, that's a good woman, she can do that well. I want to say to you this morning, dear friends, there's some things that God can do or the Lord Jesus can do. And we sang it on our first hymn this morning. He doeth all things well. He does it all well. And I trust this morning, if you're in this meeting and you're saved, that you get excited about the things of God. I tell you, we've got something worth getting excited about. Got something worth being excited about. I want to say to you this morning, and you will not hear anything new this morning. I'm not going to bring something to you that you have never heard before, but the cry of my heart would be that we would get excited again about the things of God. To get excited. The first thing I want to bring to you this morning about the Lord Jesus is this, and it's in the last verse that we read, He's able to save. He's able to save. I wonder, is there someone in this meeting this morning and you're not saved? Maybe others think you're saved. Maybe you've even pretended to be saved. But as you sit in this meeting this morning, you're not saved. Oh, thank God I can bring you to one this morning that's able to save. Able to save. How do I know? Well, we sang it in the prayer meeting on Thursday night. It is no secret what God can do. What He's done for others, He can do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. You remember in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, it was there the angel came to Joseph. And the angel said to Joseph, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Save. You remember the Lord Jesus himself said in Luke, 12, Luke 19 and 10, I am come to seek and to save that which is lost. You remember the great apostle Paul said, this is, a word, this is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save, save, to save sinners. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you saved? And I've been asking myself this morning, if we are saved, are we enjoying being saved? Are we enjoying it? I can stand here this morning, dear friends, and I can say this, I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad there's a day whenever the Lord came and he drew me to himself with the cords of love. I'm glad that I'm not at home this morning, sitting with a hangover or a headache this morning. I'm glad that I haven't been wasting my money on drink or drugs or cigarettes during the week. I'm glad that I'm saved, to be saved. Are you glad to be saved? Is there a joy in your heart? Saved. You maybe say to me, Stephen, saved from what? You remember in Hebrews chapter 11, you'll get that wee phrase there, the pleasures of sin. The pleasures of sin. They are but for a season. I'll tell you this morning, dear friends, there was young men and young women older men and women around their land last night, and they were out enjoying the things of the world. They had their enjoyment for a season. They enjoyed the pleasures of sin. And sin does have a pleasure. But the season doesn't be long going over. I wonder, is there someone in this meeting this morning? And you're riding the crest of the wave. You're enjoying your sin. You've heard the gospel message for years, but you don't want it. You're enjoying your sin. Can I say to you tonight, this morning, your season will soon be over. The season will soon be over. The pleasures of sin are but for a season. I don't have to stand here this morning and to rehearse to you all that happened in our little land in seven days. 
But there's been people in their season of sin. It's over. Over. The pleasures of sin are for a season. I could tell you this morning, and Robbie would know about them, young men that used to enjoy the pleasures of sin with me. And this morning, their season's over. Season's over. I tell you, not only does he save us from the pleasures of sin, you'll find there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 about the strength of sin. Sin has got a power. It binds us, it chains us. The Word of God says it enslaves us. How many times have you heard men and women on a Monday morning say, I'm never going to touch the drink again? How many times do you hear those of the world say, I'm going to stop the cigarettes, I'm going to stop the drink, I'm going to stop that immorality, but they can't, they're bound, they're enslaved, there's a power that we can't break. And rehab will not do it, and psychologists won't do it, and doctors won't do it. There's a power. There's a power to sin. You remember the Apostle Paul said this in Romans 7. He said, the good that I would, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that I do. He said, the things that I don't want to do, that's the very things that I keep doing. The things that I want to do are the things that I don't do. The power of sin. The power. I tell you this morning, I believe this is for some soul in this meeting. That there's maybe men or young boys and you're gripped by a power and you can't break it. And you'll say, I'm never going to do that sin again. I'm never going to do, I'm never going to go back to that again. Maybe a day or two or three or four days later, you're back. You're back. There's a power. You can't break it. I tell you, friends, that was me. That was me. Couldn't break it. Oh, Paul said this. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who who can deliver me? Is that you this morning? Who's going to deliver me? Who can set me free from the power of sin? Who can set break the, the power of cancel sin? Who can set the prisoner free? Do you know who it is this morning? I know. It's the Lord Jesus himself. The word of God says we read it. He's able to save to the uttermost. Able to save. I tell you, not only will he save you from the strength of sin, and not only will he save you from the pleasures of sin, you'll find in Hebrews chapter 13, he talks about the deceitfulness of sin. I tell you, sin that that promises, promises pleasure but it gives nothing but pain. It promises life, but it gives death. It promises happiness, but it ends in hell. It promises fulfillment, but it gives nothing but brokenness. I tell you this morning, dear friends, you go into Dungannon, you go into the Moy or the Red Ford, and you'll see men and women there, and they've been deceived by sin. You'll see a great oak tree stand in a field and a little seed of an ivy will start to grow at the base of that tree. Days, months, weeks, years later, that ivy will be around that tree and it'll smother the tree, it'll kill it. And can I say this morning with a burden in my heart, if there's someone in this meeting this morning and you're enjoying the pleasures of sin, someday it'll kill you. It says in James 1 that Sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Death. 150,000 men and women around the world today will die. And oh, God forgive us if we think it's just a statistic. But someday that'll be you and someday that'll be me. If the Lord be not come. And the deceitfulness of sin. Oh, I tell you this morning, that word deceitful there is the word delusion. Delusion. Isn't there a land tonight under a delusion? A delusion. 
You go to the man or woman last night that was involved in adultery. Sin promised them pleasure. This morning it's done nothing but gives them pain. You go to the young man or young woman this morning that was out in the world last night and they were injecting themselves with heroin, sniffing lines of coke, popping pills, and this morning, oh, sin offered them fulfillment, but it's given them nothing but brokenness. I wonder, is there someone in this meeting this morning and you're playing with sin? See, I can't see your heart this morning. I don't know your heart, but the Lord knows sin. Not only do you find that we phrase the strength of sin, not only do you read about the deceitfulness of sin and the pleasures of sin, Romans 6 and 23, the wages of sin. The wages. The wages of sin is death. Thomas Watson, the old Puritan, said this, sin drowned the world, it burnt Sodom, and it'll damn your soul. Sin. I was asking the question during the week, that awesome text in Isaiah, I wonder would it be written as a signpost just as men and women go over into eternity, into the chasms of a lost eternity, your sins and your iniquities have separated you between you and your God. And I've been asking myself and asking the Lord this week to give me a real, sincere vision of a lost eternity. To see men and women as we sit in this meeting tonight, or this morning, and I am sure there's been men and women that are sitting where you have, you're sitting this morning, and they've heard the gospel message, and they've heard how Christ died and how he came into the world to save sinners, and yet they went over the threshold into a lost, lost, lost eternity. I wonder what it's like. I'll tell you what it's like, friends. You go to Calvary there and you'll find what hell is like. It's dark. Hell is dark. You'll remember after men done their worst to the Lord Jesus at 12 o'clock, God turned out the lights of heaven. And darkness covered the earth. Darkness. You'll remember the plague that came into Egypt that said it was a darkness that could be felt. Darkness. Darkness. Jude says it's the blackness of darkness. Not only is there darkness in hell, I'll tell you there's pain there. There's pain. The Lord Jesus said, and I'm only quoting him, I'm not saying this is my words, these are his words. He says there's we weeping and gnashing of teeth. And there's men and women while we're here this morning worshiping the Lord and singing and going to remember them. There's those that used to sing the songs of Zion. And they're in pain this morning. Never to get released. Never to be delivered. Never to hear the good message of the gospel again. Lost. Not only is it dark, and not only is there pain, I tell you it's lonely. It's a lonely place. You'll remember whenever the Lord Jesus was on the cross, not only was there darkness there, not only was there pain there, he was lonely. I tell you, he cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There'll be no barbecues in hell. There'll be no drinking parties there. There'll be no immoral dances there. They're there alone. <laughs> Alone. You remember the rich man, Luke 16? He was there alone. But not only is there darkness there, not only is there pain there, there's the wrath of God. The wrath of God. And on the Calvary's cross, on that tree, when the Lord Jesus was on that cross, God poured upon him the wrath, his wrath, the wrath of God. And the billows of the wrath of God and over the Son of God, there for you and for me. And he took my hell. He took your hell. 
so that we would never need to go there. Thank God there's one who's able to save. Thank God there's one this morning that can save us from a lost eternity. Thank God there's one this morning that can change and deliver and set men and women free. He's able to save. Young man in the meeting this morning, you're not saved. But thank God it's very possible for you to get saved. Able to save. Oh, if religion had a voice, they would say, I'm willing to save you. If your morality and works had a voice, they would say, I'm willing to save. If Muhammad had a voice, he would say, I'm willing to save. If Buddha had a voice, he would say, I'm willing to save, but not able. Here's one this morning who's able to save. And he's able to save to the uttermost. There's no age restriction. There's no social restriction. This gospel message is not for some certain group of our society. It's for the whosoever will. I tell you this morning, saved. Let me ask you a wee question this morning before we go on. Are you saved? Are you saved and do you know it? Are you saved and do you show it? Saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Glad to be saved. I tell you this morning, dear friends, it's the best day of your life when you get saved. Saved. Oh, I tell you, I'll never go into the darkness. I'll never endure the pain. I'll never be left in loneliness. I'll know nothing about the wrath of God. Why? Saved. Saved. Saved for a day? No. Saved for a week? No. Ah, oh, he says, I give on to them eternal life. Never perish. A thousand years from now, I'll still be saved. A million years from now, I'll still be saved. Saved by grace alone. This is all my plea. Jesus died for all mankind, but Jesus died for me. Good news, isn't it? Good news. I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Able to save. Parent in the meeting this morning with a wayward boy or a wayward girl. Listen to the word of God, not my words, his words. He's able to save. Hallelujah. Able to save. Take me to the hardest man in McGilligan. He's able to save. Take me to the drunkard. Take me to the homosexual. Take me to the man that's living in a cardboard box in Belfast Street last night. He's able to save to the uttermost. I've never met a man like this walking down Dungan Street. Neither will you. Never met a man yet that's able to save. But he is able to save. But not only that's what he can do. Whenever you get a tradesman around your house, the next question you ask him, how well can you do it? You're going to do a good job. Ah, look at the word of God again. It says he's able to save to the uttermost. Uttermost. That word uttermost there is the word completely. That word there is the word perfectly. That there is the word to be completely saved. Saved. I tell you this morning, if you're in this meeting and you're gripped by some sin, I don't need to know what it is. No one else needs to know. It may be pornography, it may be immorality, it may be homosexuality, it may be drink, it may be drugs, it may be lies, it may be lust. I can tell you this, if you come to him, he'll save you to the uttermost. He'll take the chains from off you. Oh, I love that, and I got, read it a while back, and I can't keep... Can't stop myself from saying it. Whenever he saves us, he saves us to the uttermost. When he gives us joy, he gives us joy unspeakable and full of glory. When he gives us peace, he gives us a peace that passes all understanding. Whenever he gives us life, he gives us life more abundantly. I tell you, friends, it's good to be saved. Good to be saved. Muhammad can't give you this. Mary can't give you this. A clergyman will not give you this. I tell you this morning, if you don't have it, you can get it. What do you need to do? Cry unto the Lord. He's able to save. That's what he can do. He's able to save to the uttermost. That's how well he can do it. I tell you, on Wednesday, I don't know if any of you knew it or not, but it was Universal Happiness Day. And I wasn't maybe the happiest man on Wednesday anyway. But I'll tell you, there's some happy men in the Bible. Psalm 32, verse 1. Blessed, that word there is happy. Happy is he whose transgressions are forgiven and the sins are covered. I tell you, that's a happy man. You'll find a happy man that knows that his sins are in the depths of the sea, never to be remembered again forever. I tell you, that's a happy man. 
happy? Oh, I wonder today, are we happy? Happy. Happy. Ah, come with me, visit Calvary, where our Redeemer died. His blood it fills the fountain, tis full, tis deep, tis wide. He died from sins to sever our hearts and lives complete. He saves and keeps forever those lying at his feet. He, to the uttermost Jesus saves, to the uttermost Jesus saves. Dare you now believe and his grace receive to the uttermost Jesus saves. What does that mean? I tell you, he'll set you free, friends. Set you free. He'll deliver you from sin and he'll deliver you from bondage. He'll put a song in your mouth, even praise unto your God. I tell you, he's able to do it. Able to do it? Does he need to do it for you this morning? Have you got a joy in your heart? Glad to be saved? Go to bed tonight with the peace of God that if you die, all's well with your soul. Or maybe you're just mumbling along. Oh, don't need to, don't need to get excited about the things of I would ask you a question this morning, friends. If you're not excited about the things of God, question whether you're saved or not. Not only can he save, that's what he can do. And not only can he save to the uttermost, that's how well he can do it. Who can he do it for? It says that he's able to save to the uttermost them that come unto God by him. Come. I'll tell you this morning, dear friends, if you're in this meeting and you're not saved, if you're in this meeting this morning and you're held and ensnared in sin and you're in bondage, what you need to do is come. Come. Oh, may I say it the way the Lord would say it. Come. That's the first words I'm sure your mother ever said to you the day that you began to walk. Come. Come. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come, young man, come. Come. Come now. You couldn't tell me you'll come tonight. You may never see tonight, but you can come now. Come now. I wrote this hymn down this morning. I was meditating on it during the week. Oh, come, sinner, come. Oh, why do you delay? The pressing invitation is that you must come today. Tomorrow has no promise that it can give to you. Tomorrow is eternity. It's just hidden from your view. O oh, come, sinner, come, accept the offered grace. For death may soon be calling you into its cold embrace. The summer will be ended, the harvest will be past. Your lamentation then will be, my soul is lost at last. You come now. You just switch off from the preacher now. Switch off from those that are around you and beside you and behind you. You come. Come now. Not only can he save, that's what he can do. Not only can he save to the uttermost, that's how well he can do it. Not only can he save those who come, why can he do it? You know why he can do it? Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for him. If I could take us into heaven at this very moment, friends, and all of the angels and all of the activity of worship and praise and adoration, we would see a man in the glory, a man on the right hand of God. He's ever living. I'll tell you today, dear friends, he's able to save you because he lives. Don't we sing it? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I tell you, I can go out into another week tomorrow, face the world, the hell, and the devil, and I can go through that week not because of who I am, but because there's a man on the throne, and he ever lives. And he's been lifting our names continually before his Father in our cause this morning already. He's been pleading our cause. I tell you, no one else may know your trial. No one else may know your worry or your anxiety or fear, but he knows. Seeing he ever lives. 
Oh, we sing it up from the grave. He arose with a mighty victor over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. He lives forever. Saints to reign. I say again, I'm glad to be saved. You maybe think I've gone Pentecostal this morning, but I'm glad to be saved. Glad to be saved. Glad this morning. Glad that I'm saved and I know it. Oh, not only can he save very quickly and time is beating me. Jude 24, don't turn to it. He's able to keep. Able to keep. Oh, you're maybe in this meeting this morning and say, I couldn't keep it. Neither you could. Oh, I couldn't keep it. I couldn't, I, I couldn't go through with it. Ah, friends, the Word of God doesn't say you have to keep yourself. The Word of God says unto him that's able to keep. And he's able to keep you from falling. That word to keep there is the word to guard. It's the word to secure. I tell you this morning, dear friends, you see whenever a man or woman gets saved, he'll give you victory over sin. Victory. I tell you, dear friends, this is what we tell people in the doors and the open airs. You need to get saved because the Lord will give you victory. I wonder how many of us this morning have got it. Victory. I tell you this morning, he'll give you victory over sin. He's able to keep you from falling. He'll give you victory over immorality. He'll give you victory over lust and gossip. He'll give you victory over your anger. He's able to keep you from falling. That word falling is the word from stumbling. I love that, dear friends, that you and me, I could go down into another week. And the one who saved us not only saves us, but he keeps us. All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? All the way he keeps. You'll find that we free is there in 1 Peter chapter 1. You are kept by the power of God. I was thinking about an illustration for you during the week. And say you went in there to the Bank of Ireland with a £10 note and you lodged it in the account. The Bank of Ireland would keep that £10 note with all of the power and with all the authority it has. It would stop it from being stolen. I tell you, dear friends, you see, when a man or woman, boy or girl gets saved, they're kept by the power of God. All the bank and all of the reserves of the power of God is behind that child to keep it. Keep it in the trials and keep it in the suffering. Keep it in the worries and the fears and the anxieties and in the temptations to keep, able to keep. Oh, I wonder this morning, if you're not saved, would you come to him and let him keep you? Keep. We sing it, don't we? Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Good to be on the Lord's side. Good to be on the winning side. Good to be on a side where the Lord's backing you and he's behind you and he's for you and he's protecting you and he's guarding you. Good to be on his side. What side are you on this morning? I tell you, he's able to keep. You remember the Apostle Paul. I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep, keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I tell you, he's able to keep. The only reason I'm here, dear friends, is not because of me. Because of the power of God that has kept me. And if you're in this meeting this morning and you're saved, the only reason you're here in this assembly this morning, the only reason that you're here with any desire or inclination to worship the Lord, is because he's kept you. Kept by the power of God. Oh, I tell you, I must say I love him. I love him. Able to keep. I can say this with honesty in my heart. The day the Lord delivered me from drugs, I never had a desire to go back to them again. Never. Because he's able to keep. Ah, you can go down into the hospital ward tomorrow, he's able to keep. You go into the work tomorrow, he's able to keep. Robert can go out into the missions, he's able to keep. Ah, but it says he's able to keep you. You. You from fall. I like. Not only is he able to save, and not only is he able to secure, we read in Hebrews chapter 2 and 18, he's able to sympathize. 
It's there we read that he's able to succor them that are tempted. And that word succor there is the word to sympathize. And can I say this morning to some saint of God and you're in the middle of affliction and the winds and the tempests and the gales of affliction are blowing, I can't sympathize with you. For maybe the trial where you're in, I have never been. But there's one who can sympathize. The word of God says that we have a high priest who was touched with all the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. Ah, he knew what it was to be misunderstood. He knew what it was to be forsaken. He knew what it was to be laughed at, mocked. He knew what it was for his nearest and dearest to turn away from him. He knew what it was to suffer. He knew what it was to weep. He knew what it was to cry. He knew what it was to spend sleepless nights. Ah, friend, there's a wee verse and Paul said it, the Lord knows. Mother in the meeting this morning, the Lord knows. Father in the meeting this morning, the Lord knows. I don't know. He knows. It says that he's able to succor them that are tempted. That word there is to test. He tested this morning. Ah, you could maybe say like the Apostle Paul, without were fightings and within were fears. I'm impressed and out, pressed without measure, troubled on every side. There's one here this morning and he's able to succor them that are tested. But not only is it the word to sympathize, it's the word to help. Help. I would feel in these days that that's the cry of many of God's people. Help. Help. You remember there's a mother and you'll find her there in Matthew 15. She was a Syrophoenician woman. She came to the Lord Jesus, and this is one word that she played, Lord help. Lord help. Is that a mother this morning in this meeting? Lord, I need help. You'll remember in Mark 9, whenever the Lord came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, there was a man there with a son, he could do nothing for him. Couldn't help him, he was foaming at the mouth, the devil wanted to destroy him. Took him to the disciples, they could do nothing for him. You know what the, he came to the Lord and said? He said, Lord, help us. Help us. Help. Listen to the Psalms. I will lift up mine eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help. My law, my help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Help. Oh, I wonder this morning, do you need help? As you go down into another week, you can cry unto Lord God and say, Lord, will you help me? Ah, you'll find that wee verse in the Psalms that says, I, the Lord, will help thee. Help. I was meditating during the week on that passage in Psalm 139. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sittings and mine uprisings. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with all of my ways. Ah, he could go on to say at the end of that verse, he, that chapter, in the middle of that chapter, he could say this, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I cannot attain unto it. I tell you this morning, dear friends, the Lord knows all about us. Knows about the sorrows, knows about the burdens, knows about the words. The Lord is able, able to help. But not only is the Lord able to save and the Lord able to sympathize, and not only is he able to secure, the Lord's able to surprise. All the women here, you, you all like a wee surprise every now and again. I'll tell you this, the Lord can surprise. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. It's good to get a surprise. And I mentioned that one Sunday morning before, maybe a year or two ago, we hear about class A drugs and they're ravishing our land. 
But here's a few class A words. The Lord is able. Able. I tell you this morning, dear friends, this island of Ireland, 32 counties, the Lord is able. Able. The Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all we ask. Or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Good to get a surprise. I wonder if you ever got down before the Lord and say, Lord, you done that and I never even asked you to do it. I tell you, he can outdo us in our praying. He can outdo us in our asking. The Lord is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power worketh in us. I tell you, dear friends, he's able. Able to break in in your family. Able to change your health. Able to save a soul. Able to send revival. Able. He's some man, isn't he? Some man. Mine, mine, mine. I know thou art mine. Let me give you another two and then we're finished. You hope them out yourself. Not only is he able to sympathize and surprise, I'll tell you this, he's able to supply. You remember there's a young king, Amaziah. You'll find him in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20, 25 and 9. This is what the man of God said to him. The Lord is able to give thee to give thee. I can stand here, dear friends, and say that the Lord has given me. He's given and given and giveth again. And for over a year, left my work last year in January, I can stand here and say I've never asked for money, I've never prayed for money in a prayer meeting. I was telling Charlotte the other day, every bill was paid, every rates bill was paid, every electric bill was paid, there's enough food to feed me. The Lord is able to give thee. Ah, but it doesn't stop there. Much more than this. Hallelujah. Much more. You're in this meeting this morning. Maybe you're cold and dry and you're just enduring the Christian life. Friend, look up and say, Lord, you're able to give me much more. Much more than this. Oh, go in for the much more, friends. I'm not saying I have it, but I want it. Much more. Ah, the Lord is able to supply. Go home and read your Bible there in Philippians chapter 3, the last verse. You know what it says? He's able to subdue all things unto himself. And do you see the, <clears throat> do you see the devil, dear friends? And he causes us so much trouble. But there's coming a day when the devil's going to be the Lord's footstool. And he's going to subdue all things unto himself. Able. The Lord is able to subdue all things. All principalities and all powers and all dominions and all the names of every demon in hell will be subject unto him. I tell you today, dear friends, he's some man. He's some man. I'm glad that he saved me. I don't know what he needs to do for you during the week. Maybe the devil has been afflicting you and you say, oh Lord, would you subdue him? And he'll do it. Lord, I need help. I need aid. I need you to succor me. Lord, will you do it? Did he will? Lord, I need you to keep me. I need you to guard me. I need you to protect me. Will you do it? I'm well able, he'd say. Wonder is there a prayer going up in the meeting, and that would be the longing of her heart. Lord, would you save me? Would you save me? You know what he'd say? Young man, I'm well able. Young woman, I'm well able. Father or mother, I'm well able. On to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all 
We ask for them. Let us pray. Father, we just bow again in thy presence and Lord, our hearts are touched as we think upon the man at thy right hand. We thank thee, Lord, for every situation that we face. We thank thee that we have one who's able. He's able to do something about it. We thank thee this morning, Lord, there could be those that have come into this meeting and they're chained by some secret sin. Thank God that he's able to deliver. We praise thee if there's those in the meeting this morning that are not saved. Thank God that he's well able to save and he's able to save to the uttermost. We pray for those this morning that need help, Lord. Lord, they're in the trials of affliction and they need you to come and to succor them. We thank you that your word has reminded us this morning again that he's able to succor them that are tempted. Father, we just cry that our adoration for him will rise. And Lord, that we'll be taken up with an excitement and a wonder for all that he not only has done for us, but all that he yet will do for us. And Father, we pray as we would sing this hymn and those that go and those of us that stay, we pray, Lord, that we'll be lifted into a new level of worship and adoration for all that he has done. We ask it in the Savior's precious name. And Lord, I would like to say a personal word this morning. I want to thank you for saving me. I want to thank you, for, Lord, for keeping me. I want to thank you, Lord, for, for helping me, Lord, and to sympathize with me. Thank you, Lord, for surprising me. Thank you, Lord, this morning that you're able this morning. And so, Lord, we return thee thanks in the lovely and precious name of thy Son. Amen.